Welcome one and all to this 57th episode of D&D with me Mike and me Zoe and today we are going to deal with this guy <coughs> if we kick him we can kill him even from the front and that's no bueno we also have a problem with the sort of spawning area being um, too large too large sort of thing so let's begin fixing that uh, that's a relatively easy fix. The problem there is that we divided by 48 or 40 as opposed to divided by 64 um, in the size. So that's an easy fix. Let's go do it. Models. Environment? No. Need to environment. Thank you. Okay, so this is the one. So we divided it by 40. Let's re-multiply by 40. And then let's divide by 64. Whoops. Okay. File. What did I press? Everything's not going my way. <laughs> hey. Save. Okay, here we go. I think that's good. Let's test it out right away. <clears throat> so that's one thing. And yeah, the other thing will be detecting if the kicks come in from behind. Uh, I don't remember if the bomb actually works. Oh, is that the correct size? It still feels too large. Hmm. Control A. Uh. Seems odd. I don't think this is making a difference. Oh. Yes, it is. Oh, you change the tile. And it's interesting because it's put it on grass. Do you notice that? Yeah. So, hmm. I wonder if we should do something about that. Because it's put it on grass. I don't know why it would put it on grass. Did we? Maybe we left grass there just as a reminder to put an enemy there. I strongly doubt it, but it's possible. I think it does it automatically. View, show grid, world. Zoom in, hide. Oh, yep, never we mind. Did put we did. There. Yeah, it's, I don't think we need for to remind ourselves though. I think we did it because we're potatoes. Maybe. It's a different substance. Control Shift E. Control S to save. So. Now it's not on grass. Yeah, I'm gonna kick him. Oh, oh wait, it is on grass. No, it no, isn't. isn't. Yeah, it needs to be reloaded from the texture. Okay, so that's good. Um, now we can. It means we can put whatever we want there. That's good when we kill him we also don't have a single effect for killing him so there's a bunch of stuff that needs to happen here um, all right so step number one will be detecting if we are hitting the guy from behind or from the front um, the sword right because for kicking him we don't kill him when we go over him remember <laughs> sorry um, okay so Enemy, uh, enemy shield, aggressive, blah, blah. Uh, okay, this is when they go aggressive. Control M O. Now let's look for when the player kicks us somebody. Control M O. All right, scroll down. And there should be attack routine. Uh, attacking, blah, blah, blah. On collision, enter. That's not it. <clears throat> uh huh. Attack entities. 
RB velocity transform direction forward normalized etc well so what we need to do is we need to check where the player is looking excuse and we need to check where the enemy is looking and if they're looking in the opposite direction or close to then that's a problem like you you're not actually um hitting him um let me think what what how to do this so the suppose the enemy is north compared to you facing south and you're attacking him facing north that means he'll hit you with the sky spikes but you're still attacking him well, that shouldn't really create anything uh, while interacting stop attack Yeah, well, there's no list of attacked entities. What the heck? How is this happening? Hmm. Are we using the helper to attack? There's attack module. That could be something too. Player attack. On player attack, on off. Enable attack trigger. Attack module activate. And there we go. On trigger stay. Player receive entity from attack. This is this is going all full circle. Uh, <laughs> Back to the player. Okay, so receive entity from attack. Interactive entity IE. IE is now uh, enemy E destructible D. <clears throat> e take damage. That's the problem. It will depend on the E. Um, and we don't really know if take damage is the right thing. It will depend on the E type, the enemy type. Does E include an enemy type? My bet is yes, but I guess I'm wrong. I don't see it. That's strange. So we don't have an enemy type? What the heck? <clears throat> hmm. Yeah. It doesn't look like we have an enemy type anywhere. State health, state setup, aggressive passive interactive. There's a set of enemy for sure. Interactive entity. Uh -huh. From interactive entity, interactive entity type. Okay. So if I can get its interactive entity and the type. Make a public entity type Yeah, that's the one uh, Yeah, um, and it's gonna be get interactive entity type <clears throat> Just wait a moment, this may be being duff Duft. Oh, we have already received it here. Never mind. It is duft. Save. First think, then code. Pretty important. Um, okay, so if he is not null, switch. IE. Just type IE. Dot. Interactive. IE type. Hit enter. Okay, so there's a bunch of them here. So we've only got enemy shield and enemy bomb. Save. 
So this is one way in which we can do it. So we could do this switch over here to decide what's actually happening in the attack. Um, for the enemy bomb, save. For the enemy bomb, uh, basically the bomb blows up, so there's no question. Cut this, put it here, and that's fine. Save. But for the enemy shield, we need to check if uh, we need to verify what the situation with the enemy shield is compared to us. Uh, for some reason, it's something I would probably prefer for the enemy to do because it's kind of his job. Right? So the enemy should know, but then again, you are attacking. So, hmm, there's questions. Let's see. Um, so yeah, again, we would need to know from what angle the enemy, like where we are compared to the enemy. Literally, if we are, yes. So depending on where it's facing, we need to choose, um, Ah, uh, there's a problem though, because the enemy can face in any direction, I think. So we're putting it roughly facing down. That's not good though. We wanted to have the enemy facing in directions. Save. Just leave yourself an error. Um, we wanted to have the enemy face in a certain direction when, when spawned uh, with the angle. But... Okay, angle angle becomes patrol angle get component enemy shield set up this and the rotation has already been decided but not here who decides the rotation probably enemy spawner let's see uh, transfer name is done with quaternion oiler spawn angle so that's the problem you've got the spawn angle uh, which depends on R now we could tell it that it's limited to certain angles. Uh, yeah, let's let's do that. Um, so serialize field. Private bool. Uh, 90 degrees spawning. Just, no, just type 90 word. Right angle spawning, whatever. Yeah. Spawning equals false. Semicolon. Okay, copy. And. Uh, Where does spawn angle get it? Aha, uh -huh, here. If open paste, close, open. Enterprise, close, open squiggle. I mean, else, open squiggle, close. So if it's right angle spawning, we're going to have to do some math. Cut this, put it here. Put it here as well. But here it's going to be different. Save. So we can't do this. I mean, this is a good starting point, but this is not all that we need to do because we need to be able to know by how many degrees we need to rotate in terms of increments of 90. Okay. What will be the fastest way of doing this? Um, so we could divide by 90. Um, yeah, we could divide by 90, then we're going to get a number. Suppose that you send it 89, right? You divide by 90, you're going to get slightly less than 1. If you round that number to an int, right, mm -hmm. you're, you're going to be all right. So if you do a 45, it'll have to decide whether it's going to go to 90 or 0. If you do a, because 45 divided by 90 is half, mm -hmm. and half needs to decide whether it's going to go up to 1, or down to uh, or down to zero yeah. and so on <clears throat> so one thing that we can probably do is we could floor it so we round it always down to the closest int after we divided it by 90 okay so you can say 
all of this and then you go divided by 90 F save um, no actually we could do it much differently okay so instead of going between 0 and this let's go we don't even need to lerp it we're just gonna go between 0 and 1 okay save now we're gonna um, multiply this by 4 F so let me think this through suppose you send it a 1 you get a 4 uh, well technically we don't want to get to 4 we want to get to 3 uh, yeah but that's fine because up to 75% uh, 75% or up is gonna get us to the fourth one so to 3 so I think at least so let's see if we send it 75% uh, divided by 4 um, you are going to get three something so the only risk is if you get four so here you want to clamp this go mathf dot clamp open uh, yeah open round and it's gonna be this thing clamped between zero is lowest value f come on focus and next one is three is low is highest value <clears throat> close round capital M on math save so we're gonna, the math we're doing here is we're receiving a percentage. We're multiplying the percentage by four, which mm -hmm. means we could get any number between zero and four. Now we are then clamping it to a maximum of three. Okay. Then, actually we're gonna do the clamping after, but that's okay. So here what we're gonna do now is we're going to floor it. So here you wanna say mathf dot floor. Go wait wait a moment. This floor say returns the largest or smaller than the the la largest integer smaller. Okay, so that's good. So it gives us an int, but it's still a float as a data type. Okay. So and you're gonna floor this over here, and after you floored it, you're gonna get numbers between. 0 and 4, where 4 can only happen if you have a full 1. Then we clamp it, so it goes down to 3. And now we can multiply whatever the result is by 90 degrees. F. Save. Okay, so do you understand this math or not? No. Okay, well let's start again. Actually, let's start with GIMP helping us out. Okay. So... We are going to be sending a color to, to that guy. Okay. The red channel, right? Now, the red channel is a number that goes between 0 all the way to 1. These are the only two, well, these are the infinite possibilities in between. That's, that's it. Okay. okay. Now, what we want to get is instead of getting any number in between, we want to get a multiple of 90. Now, obviously, you can't get 90 from this. The way we did it before, we went between 0 and 360 because we wanted yeah. to get the whole possible circle, but literally any value in between. Here, we don't want any value. We want to get um, a, a maximum of four values. 0, 90, 180, 270. Okay. Four values. So, we can't just go to 360. Well, yeah, because that's zero. There's mm -hmm. no difference. So we got these four values we're interested in. How do we get to them from this? Right? So if you do a zero, well, I mean, so I, I said it's four, right? So mm -hmm. that means you want to multiply whatever number you have by four. So that's the first step. When you multiply this number by four, let's look at the extremes. Zero is going to be zero, right? Uh, 0 0.25 is going to... Uh, it's going to be 0. 0 0.25 times 4 is going to be a 1. Right? Mm -hmm. And so on. Then you have 0 0.75, for example, which is multiplied by 4. You get uh, 1.5 times 2. That makes 3. And then you got the, the last possible, which is 1 times 4. That's 4. That's four. Now, 4 is one index too high for us. Yeah. Right? Which is a problem. This is why we're going to we're gonna uh, remove this but we're gonna do that in a bit now the first step is I've given you easy numbers you could have uncomfortable numbers like 0 
Mm. Right? If you open a calculator and you tell it 0 0.33 times 4, you get to 1.32. So that leads you to 1.32. Well, that's not one of the integers we're interested in. So what we can do is we can round this number. If you rounded this number, you'd go down to 1, right? Mm. But if you floor it, that means it's a rounding that forces going down every time. So 1.96 would be 1. Okay. 1.9999999 would be 1. Okay, even though it's well close to 2. Mm. So that means that when you're choosing the color here and you go with red, full red, or no red, okay, no red is your 0. As you progress up, this number goes up. As it keeps on going up, you eventually are going to get to the 25%. Uh, so 0 0.25 times 255, 63. So when I cross, oh, that's lucky. When I cross 63, I'm now in the new territory. So let's see, 70 divided by 255, that's 27%. Okay, multiply 27% by 4, that's 1.09. If we're flooring, what number is it going to be? It's going to be 1. That's right. So it's going to be 1. Okay, that's how this is all going to work. So any number between here and here, well, between here and 2, right? So between here and here becomes there. Any number between here and here becomes there. Any number between here and here becomes this, except this one. Because if you floor 4, which is an int, you get 4 again. Mm -hmm. Which is why we are then clamping. Okay, so let's take a look. This is our number from 0 to 1. We multiply it by 4, so we get that situation. We then floor it, so we get the integers we want. Mm -hmm. Except we still have 1 as an integer, excuse me, 4 as an integer. That's not good. What we do then, right, is we tell it, actually, we're going to clamp you between 0 and 3. So even if in the extremely rare occasion that you have full blast red, you go all the way to 4, we're going to force you down to 3. At this point, we can have only four values. 0, 1, one. 2, and 3. That's it. Mm -hmm. If you multiply any of these by 90, you're going to get 0 by 90 is 0. zero so that's the first one we want. 1 by 90 is 90, second one we want. 2 by 90 is 180, third one we want. And, and 3 by 90, 270, the fourth one we want. So mm -hmm. our enemy can now face in the four cardinal directions. Okay. This is going to be important for all of our puzzle. Okay, so this is now the spawn angle. If we go to our spawner prefab, map entity do you understand the math now yes no yes okay probably won't be able to recreate it but there you go so shield spawn point and we're gonna tell it uh, we can't tell it because we have an error yeah, let's we do save it, it. Could you, could you call? so there it is and now it's going to compile correctly and we're then going to remove this error and we're going to tell it, you are right angle spawning. But the other one is not a right angle spawning. The other one spawns whatever angle it wants. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that's finally done. Now we can check that the enemy, where the enemy is facing. And, uh, well, and, and then we determine whether we want a horizontal or a vertical axis. Okay. Okay, because if he's facing down, you want to compare the Y. If he's facing sideways, you want to compare the X. If I attack him anywhere so that I'm to the right of him and the shield is facing this way, I do not damage him. Mm -hmm. If I attack him anywhere from behind, then I do damage him. Behind, in this particular example of my hand raised here in the end, if he's facing where my hand is open, actually, let me do it this way, so he's facing that way. If I'm here, then I'll attack him. Okay, awesome. Suppose that his x is 0 and this is plus 1 and this is minus 1. If my x is higher than his 0, no damage. If my x is lower than his 0, yes, damage. But before I can decide this, I need to know which direction he is pointing. Mm. Okay, because if he is pointing this way, this is still 1, this is still negative 1, but negative 1 now causes no damage. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the kind of thing that we need to think about. So the first thing to determine would be... Uh, which cardinal direction the enemy is facing um, or simply send the enemy a query as to whether we can hit him from the back 
or something. Not really sure. Uh, we could ask the enemy if the attack is valid or not. Um, let's see. So enemy, it doesn't have any queries, I don't think, but I think we will create one. So public void uh, bool, rather bool. Check if Ah, wait a moment. Yeah, go check if attack valid. Open around, close around, open a screen, save. So check if attack valid. This one is going to have to check. Uh, let's add the word is here. Save. Um, this one's going to have to check various things depending on the situation. So we're going to tell our player to check if the attack is valid. Not like this. This will sort itself out. I think that the enemy knows it's on IE, doesn't it? Yes, mm. it does. Good. All right. So uh, comment this out. And here you want to say E dot check if attack valid. And here you say if open round, close round, open squiggle, hit enter twice, close, save. So only if the attack is valid, cut this, put it here, save. So we're going to check if the attack is valid, okay, inside the enemy. Now the enemy needs to know itself. Uh, and I don't think it knows the type of enemy, so we're going to have to sort of search for it on the fly. But we're going to do switch, tab tab, ie dot type. There it is. Tab or enter, enter, enter. Yeah. Okay, so again, enemy shield interests us and enemy bomb interests us and save. So for this one, it's simple. We're simply going to say return true, right? Semicolon because every time it doesn't matter how you impact the the bomb, you cause damage. Here, so we avoid having errors. You're gonna say return false. So if all of the other attempts have gone wrong, we're just gonna say we don't know what to do, man. Your attack is not gonna work. Mm. Okay. And now the only one that's left is the enemy shield. So, for the enemy shield, we need to do that calculation, and we're going to ask our shield enemy, whatever it's called, to sort it out. Enemy shield, that's the one. Okay? So, here we're going to say public bool. Bool. Uh, first, you need a name. Yeah. Um, here's going to be... Um, Check if attack is valid. Open close round, open a squiggle. Save. Okay, now this one, because it's so specific, this is the uh, shield. Here it makes sense to actually make the final calculation because the bomb doesn't care about checking if the attack is valid. It's always valid. So mm. the enemy class, which is the parent, is going like, okay, should I check? Oh, not really. Okay, sounds good. But on this one, yes, I need to check. Okay, mm. but this one knows its own rules. If you have then another enemy that has a shield or something, we're going to have to perhaps have different rules. Suppose an enemy that has a shield only on a quarter of itself. Right? Mm. Okay, so... <clears throat> check if attack is valid. Uh, here we need to compare what we said, the position, etc. But the one thing that we're also going to need is we need to absolutely know which direction we're facing. Um, so that will be really useful to know. Um, and let's see. So inside enemy, when you set up the enemy, you there you go, get component shield, set up this. Okay, enemy shield, it sets up this. And it's got the float angle, which has been received from the other side. Send it angle here. 
Now we need to go to here and we need to request a new float. Call it facing angle. Lowercase facing angle. Save. Okay. Save this one as well. Now we've received this facing angle. We also need to store it somewhere. Uh, copy all of this. Paste it here. Call this one state. And actually, we're going to call this one angle with lowercase a. And now that's enough, it's done. And now here it's going to be private int facing angle. Or facing direction, that's fine. Direction, yeah. Semicolon. Okay, and let's give it an equals negative one by default save because it, it doesn't know. Okay, and uh, I'm wondering if we should uh, do we have a do we have cardinals in the game? Do you know? No, I saw it. I still don't think so. Wait, we had one thing about it. We do. We do have cardinals. What the heck? So if we have cardinals, let's just use them. Uh, enemy shield. Instead of this, it's gonna be. Cardinal facing cardinal. Cardinal. Okay. Cardinal. Save. And this one is going to be cardinal. Do we have a none? Yes. Save. So we start at none. And here we're going to calculate the cardinal from the angle. So create a cardinal. Private. Okay. It's already private, so yeah, just hit tab. Cardinal, get cardinal from angle. Request a float angle. Angle, request a float angle. You forgot the word float. Close round, open squiggle, get enterprise. Okay, so we're going to feed it this this angle and we're essentially going to reverse engineer the thing uh, so here tell it copy face facing cardinal cardinal paste it here equals and it's gonna be this paste open and open angle close how come I'm feeding it the word angle when it's requesting the word angle because there's another angle here that's right this is the angle I've got in here this guy setup has no idea that this guy has, has an another angle. angle okay th these are two different things the reason we call them exactly the same is because uh, it's comfortable we we know what they what they are for but they are different en entities mm. so get cardinal from angle angle facing cardinal so from now on facing cardinal will have that information so now what we're going to do is if we remember correctly the angle has been multiplied by 90 but they're all integers so dividing by 90 is going to get us is gonna get us the exact number for sure. So here you're gonna say uh, copy facing cardinal. Uh, no, don't actually. My bad. Um, type cardinal. There it is. Call it returnable equals. And now we're gonna say angle divided by ninety. Float. 90f. Okay, now put this in brackets and you're going to say mathf dot round to int and you need to cast it all as a cardinal. So copy, open a round bracket, paste, close round bracket, semicolon here. Save. Now there's a problem. I have no idea whether this makes any sense because I don't know in what order they are. So they are west, but is west a rotation of zero? I have no idea. North, is it north a rotation of 90? Is east a rotation of 180? Is south a rotation of 270? I don't mm. know. We're going to have to find out. So it may be wrong, and we're going to have to make some adjustments. Okay? Uh, in fact, for now, here's what we're going to do. Copy serialize field, paste it here. Save. So this is going to display it for us. Okay? And returnable is kind of useless now, so let's just say return. Space. Save. 
Okay, so that's good. Now check if attack is valid. Uh, just say return false for now. Semicolon. Okay, now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check that these cardinals are correct. Okay. In order to check that, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate that enemy in that area, right? Mm. A few times. And uh, just make sure that they point in the right direction. That's all. So down we go. We're going to go to entities. We're going to hit control, hold control. Okay, now we got this orange. And I'm going to put them. It's not letting me do it. I don't know why. Oh, because I'm. Mm, never mind. Uh, so hold control again. Done. Release. So I'm going to put one, two, three, four. They're right here. Now I'm going to control shift E and go to entities. That's easy. Now to entity. Now we're going to go entity info because this is very important for what we want to what we want to do in terms of um, how we want them rotated, right? So black will be not rotated at all, which means mm -hmm. we don't even need to give it a value actually. Okay? We can give it very, very little red. There you go. That'll do. Okay, so this one should be facing zero, whatever that is. Right, then we said above 63, 90, that's pretty good. Boom. This one will be 90 degrees. The next one is going to be probably about here. Okay, and then the last one, full blast. Let's put full blast just to test. There we go. Okay, so did you already export entities? We've already exported entities. I have an impression we did it wrong, so re-export it again. Control, no, wait. Control Shift E. Yeah, we had the world displaying exactly. as well. Yeah. And now Control Shift E, Entity Info. All right. And now we're going to see how they look like, right? We're going to see if they're actually facing in the right directions that we have specified if stuff is working as it's supposed to. Uh, if we have that, then we can begin with our calculation. I have no idea why I decided to put them down there as opposed to here, but never mind. There they are. Okay, so good news, one piece of good news, they're all rotating correctly and they're all rotated in 90 degree increments. So that's perfect, right? By the way, now, you'll see I can't hurt them. Mm, Cause those turns is false. Well, all the yeah, exactly the check is guaranteed to return false all the time, right? Now, however, I'm fairly certain they're wrong, and I kind of expected that. So here's one. So this enemy shield is an enemy shield. Blah blah blah. Enemy cardinal west. No way. You're facing north. Okay, mm -hmm. so zero of rotation. No, never mind. This is a 90 rotation. Okay. A bit weirded out by that, but all right. So let's see this one. So this one is the one that we colored fairly dark red. So let's go with absolute red, which is this guy. Mm -hmm. There. So full red is rotated negative 90, which is 270. That makes sense. That's our highest. I did, I did it wrong. Okay, 270. So this is full blast, and it's the highest possible rotation. Which direction is that? Left. Mm, this is left, so west. That's right. So he's... It's south. Exactly. But he's actually facing west. Okay. So I think what we're going to do is we're basically going to be a bit lazy and we're simply instead of doing the return like this right where we're trying to be all sorts of clever we're simply going to say if angle is a certain number then it's west if angle is another number then it's blah okay so okay. here you're going to do a switch tap tab cut this paste it here okay so we are switching save this particular little formula, right? Which can have what values? This one can have all the four cardinals, so. Well, yeah, but they're not cardinals yet. They're just ints. So you go case zero, right? So this is, no, it's oh. an int. You've just rounded it to an int. Yeah. Break. Now do the same for case one. K 
case one, case two, etc. Here, copy, paste, 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 case one, two, three, save. All right, so case zero, that means you've divided zero by 90, so it's zero degrees. 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees. So 270 degrees we know is what cardinal? It is, uh, it's south. No. Well, it was south, but it's supposed to be west. Right, so dot west. Semicolon. So let's actually compact it a little bit like this. You don't need a break if you return it, right? Mm. Okay, so return west. So copy all of this, paste it here. What's the, what is it likely going to be for 180 degrees? Mm, north. That makes no sense. So if 270, if you do this circle, right, 270, uh, actually wait, does it make sense? You may be right. I thought we were going in this direction. I think you're so. right. I think this may be north. So type north. Save. Okay. Now let's go check if a rotation of 180 is north. And it isn't. It's... Whoa, that's weird. It's north, but it's facing... How in the bloody world is this even possible? So, uh, excuse me, this is 270, yeah? This is 180. That's... that's that, 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 sorry, this does it's not compute. It's not compu north. Does not compute. What the heck? How in the world are you rotating by 180 and end up here when... Is this, does this have a rotation? Why is this rotate? Ooh. Oh, hello. What? Oh, I think I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm a little confused. How does this happen? So we've got the spawner. Why are the spawners rotated? Okay, like everybody is rotated here. This is kind of crazy. So enemy shields, this is a spawner. This is an enemy spawner. Notice these spawners are rotated. Mm-hmm. Not, not the guys. They're not supposed to be rotated. Okay, I think there's another problem here. So you've got their children then going nuts. That makes some degree of sense now. So let's go check at the enemy spawner. Color C, spawn angle. Okay, start spawn routine, stop spawn routine, spawn angle E instantiate. Sure, I don't care, but somebody's setting you up before then, and that's going to be interactive entity, is my bet. Uh, this is a helper? No. Ah, uh, that's not it, I'm sorry, it's map entity, not interactive entity. So, map entity. Enemy spawner, ES, get component spawner, set up C. Feeds it a color. That's it. But where in the bloody world is it rotating? I genuinely don't see any... We're in the enemy spawner doing stuff. Is it possible that it's getting rotated by the map tile when it's setting up? Send info to entity. Entity ET, C, blah, blah, blah. Setup tile, wall tile, oh, still not there. Because it feels to me like these are random rotation of 90 degree increments. That's, I think, what's happening. Uh, here, simply say return cardinal dot none. Semicolon save. Okay, so that's good enough. So the error goes away, we can experiment with this. But yeah, my impression is that the, the guy is rotating at random. But even if it were, I don't think it would matter. I think the... Okay. I don't know if it's local rotation or rotation we're messing with, but it shouldn't be. No, this should be rotation, not local rotation. Uh, except I'm not sure. Then it's transfer, that's fine, sure, whatever. Quaternion Euler. Let's just do one tiny little silly thing. Ah, uh, no, let's not, because then we're going to have a problem. Mm. Um, E.transform.rotation dot rotation equals copy this, paste it, 
semicolon. Let's see if we get a different result. Also, before we do anything, this is kind of boring. So, cut these, paste them. Cut these, paste them. Control Shift E. Control Shift E. All right, so I've redone this, but I've put them closer so I don't have to wait till I get to the enemies. Okay, so let's go up. All right. So there they are. They are placed exactly the same as before. So that's at least good news. Now, all of these are rotated. This doesn't matter. What we're going to do now is we're going to grab these four enemies and we're going to expel them from here so we can see their actual rotations. 180, 0, 90, negative 90, 90. Okay, so here's what we're seeing. Mm. Okay, so this enemy, this first one here up top, this is the one that we have specified to be not rotated at all. It should be a, what value? It should be zero. It's not rotated. And it is. The next one to his right, this one, is rotated 90. 180, 270. Makes final sense. Finally makes sense. Okay? So, 3 is 270. 2 is 180. Okay? Okay. Three. And it's south. So, 180, south. So, I was wrong. I was right in saying it didn't make any sense. So, 2, south. Two. 1 is 90 degrees. So, copy all of this. Copy. Copy it. Paste. And this one is? So this one is east. Yeah. It's hot. And this one is? This one is north. That's right. Save. Okay, finally we got this right. Okay, now that we have the cardinals, we can finally work in with checking if the attack is valid. Okay? Okay. So, uh, we know, say, if an enemy is facing north, as long as you're above it on the y-axis, no discussion, you lose that confrontation. Yeah. We're actually going to do above or equal to be... So, even on the sides, you lose that confrontation. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing really happens, because on the sides he won't attack you, but he won't take damage. If you kick him either. Right? So, anyway... Check if attack is valid. So this, we're going to have to do a switch by cardinal. By this thing. Copy. So here you're going to say switch. And no, hit tab twice. Banana. Switch. Tap tab. Yeah, paste. Enter. Okay. Facing cardinal. Save. Um, sure. Whatever. So, if it's facing west, we need to worry about the X, right? So, mm. we're going to say uh, return game manager dot script dot player dot transfer dot X. So, he needs to be more west than me, mm. right? Uh, dot west, uh, excuse me, dot X is lower so more left would be lower or equal lower or equal to transform.x semicolon now that's kind of not true uh oh, i forgot the position.x position.x and copy the word position paste it here save so <clears throat> we are going to return what can you read that? What does it mean? What if data type are you returning? We're returning a position. No. I can't believe something like this can stump you. Hello, Earth to Zoe. 
public bull. What data type are you returning? A bull. Well done. Congratulations. So that's one step. Now, how does this thing turn into a bull? How is it a bull? It is not. How is it not a bull? Because it doesn't say anything about bulls in it. It does say something. What does it say? Game manager dot script dot player dot transform dot position dot. Yeah, you can read. What does that mean? In in human language. Mm, the position. The position of right. Of right. Where X is. Okay, so the X value of the position of whom? Of the player. Of the player. What about it? If it is lower than... You said if. So is that a bull? Yes. Right. So what we've done is we've condensed a question in this. Right? So here it says, if the player's X... Is lower than... Lower or equal to my X, that is... Then it is... So if it's lower, is the attack valid? The lower the attack is not valid. That's right. Therefore, we need to put higher than. Save. Not just higher, not higher or equal. Save. We're going to be... Uh, we're going to have a negative bias, meaning that it's more likely, ever so slightly more likely, for you to not succeed at your attack. So, mm -hmm. again, uh, I'm now showing her with my hands in real life. So now, if we have there, this is good. This is this looks a bit like a shield, right? Yeah. So it's facing that way. It's facing west, right? Mm -hmm. If the player look there, right, says the player position dot x. Here's the player. The position dot x is this thing, right? Mm -hmm. If the position dot x, right, is lower. Uh, excuse me, higher than x. Is it higher than x here? Uh, yes. No. No. Wait. Higher. Higher. Negative. Left. Then, no. So, I hit the shield. Mm -hmm. Is it higher than X? No. I hit the shield. Is it higher than X? Yes. I hit the back. Is it higher than X? Yes. I hit the back. Etc. <laughs> We've already accounted for proximity because all of this only happens when contact happens. We've already checked that. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's one condition. Now let's see if you can figure out north. You do it yourself. So north would be the y-axis. Okay, that's one step in the right direction. Still the player. Yep. Too much typing, too little hitting the tab key. Okay. I made one mistake. One too many. So anyway, and uh, yeah, so the position dot but y. What about it? So y is this direction. Mm -hmm. So you say north, right? Yeah. Where is it valid to attack from? From be before the behind. behind. So so lower. Uh, lower. Most of code is basically putting what you're thinking into words that a computer can understand. That's it. All right. Next. East. Now you're you're lazy, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Just change that lower than to a higher. Oops. That's it's not you. That's that's Visual Studio trying to be clever. And failing. Save. And for south, we're gonna take the north. And flip. Copy that. Still unhappy. Why? Because this is a bull. Uh, I suppose that's true in a weird way. Yeah. What is this it? This is a bull, and it needs to return a bull. Yeah, well, it's returning. But it a is bull. returning returning a bull. Yeah. So what's the problem? Not all code paths return back. Uh, not value. all code paths return a value. What does that mean? Mm, do we have to put a break after all of this? No. You're returning, so a break would be unreachable code. Yeah, it turns into that. So, 
You're switching for facing cardinal, correct? Correct. Yeah. You're checking west, north, east, and south. Are you missing one? Mm, none. What happens if it's none? Nothing happens. Mm, that's fair enough, but you need to tell it. Oh, so okay. we got a few options. One option. Wait. We got a few options. One option would be to do a case for none, but that would mean you have you'd have a case for absolutely everyone. Another option would be default, which means any other than these. There's yet a third option, which is the best one by a distance. Return false. So outside of the switch, no matter what happens, if everything fails, then just return. return false, the attack fails, whatever. Mm. Okay, so now we need to hook up the enemy's attack with this. This one with the enemy shield. Mm -hmm. So here you're gonna say get component open of type enemy shield close open close round no open close round dot the same name of this method so check if attack is done. There check if attack is done. Open valid. close round semicolon. So we're making an assumption now that the only possible assailant, oops, that's a breakpoint. The only possible assailant is going to be the player. Fine. Okay. It, oh, I forgot one keyword here. Return. Because this one is a boolean, it's happy because this is a boolean too. Mm. Okay. So now if it's true, then we can damage the enemy. Mm. All right. So now we can test if this is at least functioning more or less. Obviously, we need to reboot it. But um, that's good. And then we're going to stop here. Because one thing we still need to do is we need to determine if the attack is going to be fatal or not. Right? Because if the attack is not fatal, if the attack doesn't kill the enemy, then what we're going to do is we're going to um, make it fall over or whatever, and we can trample over it and go across. So this didn't work. I attacked it, right? That didn't work either, taking the shield. That's weird. Because this should work. So maybe we've done something wrong. Let's take a look. <clears throat> so <clears throat> the player's doing fixed update here. Doesn't matter. Attack. E. Check if attack is valid. So this should work. Check if attack is valid. Enemy shield. Get a component. Enemy shield. Check if attack is valid. Oh, we're idiots. We're using Y and not Z. Our oh. game is 3D. Right? So Z over here. Z over here. Z over here and Z over here, save it. Because the, um, it makes no difference on the Y to Y, they are exactly the same. And because ours is the other way around, okay. Anyway. There, I've killed them both. The interesting thing is this, if you're running into an obstacle, you can sometimes rebound back. It's, like, it's because the wall has a rebounding thing. I don't think it's that. Bye. In the face. So obviously we'll never have a case like this, right? Where there are four facing different directions all at the same time. So this one's safe. Right? Oops. There. And it's worked, right? It's not perfect, but it's okay. And now, if everything has gone correctly, we shouldn't get any damage like this, but we the bomb should still kill the enemy. So let's see if that works. Oh, poop. It's going to blow up before he reaches you. Well, that was the idea. Luckily, there's a runaway time before. Luckily, we <sighs> put it there. Luckily, I whiffed. There. So, I've succeeded in killing him. Now, let's try again. Just walking into him and trying to hurt him. And it should not work. Right? It'd be good to have some kind of feedback, right? That tells us, dong, you know, your attack has failed or something. Uh, so we're probably going to put a sound in next time where... Right? You literally can't do it. It doesn't matter where I approach him, it's not happening, right? But if I do this... Oops. Well, luckily that this, won't be this, in the game. It, it will crash, so let's not do this. Uh, I just need to walk all the way back. 
a bit boring this, but okay. I think I would have been faster throwing the bomb, going across, coming back. Yeah. Too late now. The towers are fun. Me. They look like marks. Okay. Look at him go. Slowly. Huh? Shortcut. Alright. <clears throat> ta -da! Cleared. Okay, good. That's a good place to stop for today. Thanks very much for watching, and we will see you again next time when we will actually do the whole animation of trampling on the enemy or whatever because we don't want to kill him when we kick him mm. we want to kill him when we slash him yeah and there needs to be particle systems and sounds and all sorts of stuff isn't game making great <laughs> sometimes sometimes all right talk to you later bye bye